Hello and welcome to the first session of History of Western and Indian Art. We are going to begin our session with the first module that is Post-Impressionism. Post-Impressionism was a late 19th century art movement in France. In this lesson, we will be learning about why it emerged and what are its salient features. Post-Impressionism as a term itself suggests means after Impressionism. The term was coined by British art critic Roger Fry to describe the artist who came after Impressionism. It refers to an art movement after Impressionism that rejected the lack of distinction and limited emotional range which was taking place after because of the Impressionist attachment to only technique. The artists called post-impressionists are identified by the use of vibrant colors, thick paint, real-life subject matters, geometric shapes, expressive effects in their paintings. The movement lasted approximately for 25 years from 1885 to 1910. Though it must be noted that the post-impressionism was never an organized and uniform movement of art. Individual artists also called as the four giants of this movement, Paul Cezanne, Paul Gauguin, Georges Seura and Vincent van Gogh, who had grown wary of using impressionist ideas and techniques, began to explore their own ways of painting. They focused on the form and content of the work rather than just painterly strokes and usage of color. This aspect joined them together. Let us try to identify the several trends that characterize post-impressionist. First of all, it needs to be mentioned here that while impressionist focused on light and color within nature and captured its fleeting moments, post-impressionist paid more attention to their emotional expressions, geometric structures and artistic subjectivity in their paintings. Below are the few techniques and styles that post-impressionists explored and applied. Before we begin to understand post-impressionist stylizations, let us try to understand a little about what impressionists had begun to doing. Impressionists like Monet, Manet, as also the other artists, basically began to paint landscapes at outdoor locations. Initially, an attempt to do something which photography could not achieve and go beyond the camera, these artists began capturing the light effects that were taking place in and around the natural areas like rivers, the skies, the trees, the bridges and different parts of Paris. As they went ahead, they got totally engrossed in the scientific understanding of colors and the effect of light rather than the subject matter. Later in Impressionism, we find that the artist is hardly aware of whether he is painting a pond, a building, a river, sea or the sky. Everything is almost equal to him because it is no more an object but just a form which he has to fill with light and shades of different colors. Post-impressionists who initially accepted the ideas of impressionism because they were totally impressed by the fresh colors and use that they had begun using, slowly began to be tired of painting the same thing over and over again because there obviously were limitations to how much you could uh, find new in painting just the colors, tints, tones and shades of an object. Thus they came about with a number of techniques like pointillism, symbolism, primary elements, emotion that come along in expressionist ideas. The post-impressionist invented pointillism, a technique that involved placing tiny dots of color side by side on a canvas. The dots were often overlapped to create an optical blend of colors. This technique was exceptionally successful in optics and continues to amaze the viewers all the time. Joss Hura pioneered this technique. 
symbolism as olio said was begun by post impressionist instead of focusing on capturing transitory movements of time like the impressionist would have done the artist of post impressionism explored deep meanings in their paintings and focused on expressing them they strongly believe that any work of art must have three primary elements in it the external appearance of the subject the artist own emotional reaction to the subject and the choice of form color and line many of the post impressionist strongly emphasized on emotion in art feelings of the artist conveyed through intense colors and thick brush strokes were considered central part of any work in order to demonstrate the artist emotional response to the subject matter strongly painters sought to distort the form of subject and altered its natural colors during the times of post impressionist there were some drastic changes that were happening around in the society the unbelievable changes that occurred in the world during these times have influenced the styles of post impressionist artist science and technology were creating wonders these developments gave birth to discoveries that had been unimaginable till very recently they changed the perception of world and humanity dramatically and drastically inventions of transport and new mediums of communication such as telegraph radio steam car followed by airplane took men into previously unknown places of the world european travelers began to travel to various places which were either unknown until recently or difficult to access knowledge of new places and new people made its way into artistic expressions some of the major developments that took place during this time were the invention of telephone in 1876 by graham bell in the last quarters of the 19th century people began talking to each other in spite of large distances in 1884 the first steam car appeared in the streets of france delmer and benz were already producing cars in germany and the first car exhibition took place in paris in 1898 Edo was the first to take off an airplane in 1897. He flew with a passenger and in 1909 flew across the channel. In 1892 the first tramway was running in the streets of Paris and in 1900s the Paris Underground Railway was opened. As early as in 1887 Zede had designed an electrically fired submarine. In 1895 Marconi developed the network of Hessian waves and 4 years later the first radio program was broadcast During this period art was not an isolated profession modern life provided dominant subject matters to the artist it could be understood by the variety of styles and subjects covered by the artist and that the principles governing western art established during the renaissance no longer existed The term post impressionism could be strictly apply, applied to the period where artworks were intensely thoughtful, minutely observed and highly expressive. Yet the time of post impressionism was the time of lone artists. Very few of them got together, that too rarely. Neither did they share a common opinion about art, nature or style. Yet the thing that was common among them was that all of them went against the principles of impressionism. Although impressionism had shown them a possible way, post-impressionists carved their own personal ways of expressing themselves in their art. As we have discussed, the period of post-impressionist was that of tremendous energy and scientific inventions. The post-impressionist Thus we're living in the period where everybody was enthused about the new things that were happening around in the world as also there came about tremendous changes in the ideas of literature and the ways in which philosophies could have been developing since there was lot of travel which could take place 
because of the new traveling genius inventions like the electronic submarines the aeroplanes we see that there was a lot of give and take between the oriental arts and the western arts the people now who were common place and who could not afford arts from oriental before could now easily have a look at them through the japanese prints or through the packets of tea that came from china having a fantastic chinese art done on them also this was the period when the europeans who were ruling had made colonies in areas like africa and india had begun rethinking about the arts in these places beyond their european academic standards we thus have number of thinkers who see new kind of enlightenment and beauty in arts of these places which before the period of post impressionist was almost impossible to imagine the characters in chinese japanese prints and in indian art were no longer considered to be grotesque and monstrous rather became epitome of beauty with their decorative and rhythmic lines the post impressionist although did not adopt these imagery directly in their works were very fascinated by the discussions that took place in the intellectual circle because of these new ideas coming in thus they began rethinking about what was beautiful and what needed to be represented also each of them was concerned about the mechanical way in which artists had begun painting just around them and were worried that the mechanical and scientific development would render the arts of the period in as productions too these concerns led them to develop their own styles and own answers to the questions in front of them let us have a look at a few key impressionist one of the most important painters from the post impressionist period is paul cezanne cezanne is considered to be the father of modern art He was born on January 19th, 1839 in Exen province in a prosperous merchant family. Cezanne graduated from College of Bourbon in 1858. During this time he also went to Ecole des Beaux-Arts where he studied for a small period of time. Submitting to his father's wish he also studied law. But his heart was somewhere else. His father eventually allowed him to go to Paris to study art giving him a small allowance and later a fortune. Hailing from a privileged background, Cezanne never had to sell a work to live. In 1870, he married Honet Fiquet and they had a son, Paul. In early years of his career as a painter, Cezanne was rejected as incompetent by Ecole des Beaux-Arts. His continuous lifelong struggle to find an individual and satisfactory style in painting in the end became a key influence on modern art. His first one man painting exhibition in 1895 became a turning point in the world of art history. It caused tremendous excitement for young artists like Matisse and Picasso. The last years of his life marked by solitude old and ill he continued to work incessantly already suffering from diabetes he died from pre pneumonia after getting drenched in rain while painting outdoors sezon's art is born out of his senses looking at his pictures one can experience the sensation of landscapes in their moods in all his paintings a blend of what he observed and depicted with a faithful emotional response on his canvas could be experienced by the viewer though his palette remained restricted to earthy greens blues and reds the richness with which he depicted nature is unpaired his subjects were no different from his predecessors or for that matter from his contemporaries Yet the originality of his art lies in the way of seeing and painting his subjects. He never considered any of his work to be finished because the sense of failure as an artist who could not capture the changing nature remained with him throughout his life. As mentioned earlier, Cezanne never invented his subjects. 
Rather, he depicted the same traditional subjects over and over again in order to achieve accurately what he saw, to express what he felt in order to create an aesthetically satisfying work of art. In his team of paintings, Cezanne painted apples, bottles, flowers, bread and even tablecloths. All these subjects appear as everlasting and unmoving as his mountains in the landscapes. Through his portraits, he attempted to reveal the grave and silent dignity which is at the core of every human being. And he painted his landscape with a deep feeling for the mysterious force of nature. At the age of 35, Paul Gauguin, one of the most important post-impressionists who later led to movements like symbolism and Art Nouveau, left his successful career as a stockbroker to become a painter. This move made him to leave his family as well. In 1887, he went to join Van Gogh in Ars. They spent three months together. Their violent discussions on the idea of art revealed profound disagreements and eventually led to their separation. He went to the island of Tahiti in April 1891 and became interested in the Tahitian lore and mythology which became the subject for his paintings. He again sailed to Tahiti in 1895, suffering from poverty and ill health. His health gradually improved until he struck down in April 1897 on hearing the news of demise of his favorite child. He died on 8th May 1903. During his stay in Tahiti, Gogia produced some of his best works which brought him a lot of acclaim. Powerful subjects expressed with strong understanding of design, both flattened, simplified forms, intense and saturated colors. Gogia's paintings reveal his constant search for a personal and spiritual fulfillment. His depiction of Tahiti with its feminine beauty and exotic landscape is testimony to his love for the place. He also produced very fine wood carvings of pottery and even sculpture. Like all post-impressionists, Gauguin strongly believed that the source of inspiration in painting has to be internal, not external. A painter, according to him, has to look for the symbolic and not natural colors. His love for Tahiti proved extremely infectious for his followers who developed a great interest for his primitive sources in their art. Gauguin's swift, rhythmical use of line, simplicity of the composition, could later be the style of Matisse and Picasso. Unarguably, one of the most celebrated artists of the world, Vincent van Gogh, was born on 30th March 1853 at Groot a village in Dutch Brabant. His father wanted him to be an art dealer. Therefore, at the age of 16, he joined his uncle in Goupil galleries. Despite studying the works of the great painters in museums and galleries, he was totally unsatisfied in his job as an art dealer. Wandering restlessly here and there in search of suitable profession, which would satisfy his inner urge, Van Gogh for a brief period worked as a preacher and then a missionary in Belgium. Van Gogh came to his late artistic vocation after years of dissatisfaction poverty and spiritual crisis. It was in the summer of 1880 when he was still working as a missionary. Van Gogh decided that the best thing he could do with his life would be to devote it to painting. As a painter, he began to depict Dutch peasants and workers as subjects of his works. The motto behind these subjects was to portray honesty and struggles of the workers. Later on, he shifted from his moralistic tone after he moved to Paris, where he developed his unique, expressive and swirling style of painting. When Gauguin joined him in Arles in 1887, it proved to be an unsuccessful attempt to find an artist cooperative with which ultimately led to a breakdown. He cut off part of his left ear 
during a quarrel with Gauguin, and he briefly entered an asylum in 1889. Van Gogh was odd and solitary since his childhood. He became grim, impoverished, melancholic, difficult to love, and suicidal with time. But he painted some of the world's best known, most loved, and most expensive art in his life. He had he had an instinctive, self-taught, hurried style of painting through which he attempted to probe the depths of human emotions and in moving beyond external appearances of the things. His imagination was never abstract and evasive. It was considerably informed by his study of the reality. He used paints directly from the tubes on the canvas. The most prominent characteristic of his painting style is the firm outlines and a thrilling use of color. The idea behind distortions, the colors and the forms with strange perspective was to express his inner feelings by moving away from the conventional and literal visual appearance to the symbolic and expressive ones. The greatness that he eventually achieved in his paintings were due to depth. Disturbed with failure and poverty led him to frequent mental asylums. In July 1890, Van Gogh shot himself and put an end to his suffering. He died two days later. Among his famous paintings are Potato Eater, Sunflower and the Starry Night. From about 1880, a number of painters sought to extend the new visual freedom inaugurated by Impressionists with stress on form and content. Later on, these artists were called as post-impressionist. Post-impressionists felt that however liberating impressionism was, its emphasis on surface, external appearance and moment lacked emotional range. The post-impressionists are not just known for their beautiful paintings, but are also enduring personalities. They have not just experimental with art, but they have lived their life as an artwork itself. The beginning of Impressionism in the history of art led to an artist who was an individual who suffered greatly and who lived in poverty since he worked against the ideas of art that were popular in his contemporary period. Post-Impressionism can be seen as the epitome of this life of artists with artists like Van Gogh, Gauguin, Paul Cezanne, Toulouse Lautre, Siura leading their lives in extreme trouble and health problems. These artists also had become fanatics because of their seclusion from the general part of the society. The lack of money and the lack of place to exhibit their works made them anxious as also led them to live in not very good human conditions. Being not very powerful and wealthy, they also generally had very unsuccessful love lives which created even more trauma in their living. Their subjects although are not part of these anxieties and are beautiful paintings of all times. They identified themselves by their use of vibrant colors thick paint, real life subject matter, geometric shapes and expressive effect in their works. The movement lasted for almost 25 years from 1885 to 1910. The post-impressionists are not just popular for their own time but every artist has emerged as a pioneer to the development of a new ism in their following times. Van Gogh has been very important for the beginning of Expressionist, Paul Gauguin has inspired symbolism, Art Nouveau and has been inspiring a number of artists after him like Matisse, Cezanne and in India, Amrita Shergill. Paul Gauguin has been an important artist since he has influenced movements like symbolism, Art Nouveau and also a number of artists like Matisse and Picasso and in India, Amrita Shergil. His style and his free-flowing line has
has proved to be very significant for isms like fauvism as also cubism sezan was a master of modern art who was considered to be an in inspiration for important isms like cubism who later led to further inventions like futurism sezan's idea of dividing every objectified form into simple planes proved to be a turning point in the history of art artists like toulouse lautre who were part of the post impressionist era were not just artists but philosophers we also have artists like dega who have worked extensively in the medium of pastels bringing about interesting bringing about interesting imageries and delicacy through their work of art the lives of post impressionist have been great inspirations for the literature of the coming times the lust for life a novel written by ivan stone on the life of van gogh has been a best seller for decades now they have also inspired movies like the lust for life you we also have an interesting work called mulan rouge which has been made on the life of toulouse lautre these artists have been inspirations for a lot of novelists too as they too took great inspirations from literature of their period emil zola who was important part of the group of post impressionists had inspired most of these artists with his vivid thinking and modern philosophies Another important artist from the post impressionist period is Jos Sura who began his technique of pointillism based on the ideas of color theories of Chevreul In his works Sura began using brushes making small points on the canvas using pure colors which were available in nature In this manner Sura in fact is more of an impressionist than post impressionist but he because he in his works too like impressionist lacked emotion and expression like van gogh or gogh would have liked to bring in Sura's works have human figures just as objects which are mediums to showcase his experiments of shade and light Signac is another post impressionist who followed Sura in his pursuits many of the works of these two artists look so similar that it is almost impossible to identify the difference Toulouse Lautre is one of the post impressionist who began working during the times of impressionism unfortunately Toulouse Lautre who belonged to a wealthy family of Toulouse fell down in his childhood and lost his limbs He thus developed paralysis and became dwarfish. This made him leave his family and come to stay in Paris because he was emotionally not equivalent to the other artists of his times like Van Gogh. He lived in seclusion and generally painted sitting in a place called as Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge was one of the most popular areas in Paris during this time where Emil Zola, Lautre, Van Gogh, Gauguin would sit and discuss about art having serious arguments. While sitting here he also painted some of the most fascinating posters about the events which would be happening in this place. His popular works include portraits of the dancers the musicians who were part of moulin rouge and also the dark side of the life of paris what is significant about the post impressionist art like you see in toulouse lautre is the simplicity of subjects that these artists have painted and also the depiction of real life of people like you see in the works of van gogh too Also the works of Tahiti of Gauguin represent similar ordinary living of people unlike the fancy subjects that earlier artists would have brought in Although these artists are interested in bringing out expression in their works they do not work like Manet did 
representing cerebral questioning to the audience these artists do have emotions and cerebral awakening which comes about in their works to some extent but are not really interested only in intellectual questioning through their works they are more interested in representation of ordinary life which they were going around in the living almost all of the post impressionist were sidelined from the mainstream living did not a happy family life and interestingly none of this is represented in their works